How is it going everybody? Today I will be walking through how I replaced uh, several components on my drive shaft from the Guivo discs on both sides to the center support bearing. Um, so I had to take off the exhaust to do this and broke off the nuts on my flange of the exhaust. Um, so I'll kind of walk through how I got through that whole situation. But um, yeah, we'll get started right here once I jack up this car. The first thing was to remove the exhaust and at this joint right here, the, the flange, you can just see how rusted these nuts were and this is a 2006 330i so it's 2020 so these um, nuts look like they haven't been taken off in about 14 years and um, yeah it's quite evident. So first thing I did was try and figure out which, which socket size and from the research online some said it was a 15 millimeter. And so that's what I tried was the 15 millimeter, even though there was a little bit of wiggle room and uh, that was a mistake. So as you can see here, I got my 15 millimeter socket and rounded out that nut pretty good. And basically moved on to the 14 millimeter, but it was uh, so rounded out that basically I, I kind of stripped that nut. So I said, screw that. I'm gonna move on to this other bottom side nut here and started to get out the the torch to try and break some of that rust up try and um, expand the bolt or expand the the nut there and then kind of cool it down with some penetrating oil got my 14 millimeter nut on there and uh, had to use a hammer to to seat that onto the nut You can see just how old and corroded these these studs were. My Milwaukee here just snapped the stud right off. So not good right there. Um, so you can see here right now I'm just cutting off the, the nuts. At first I tried to go in at that angle, but that didn't really work. This was much better. Kind of cut off about half of that nut there. And then you can see just in the very kind of top corner, I didn't capture this very well, but you can see me just kind of popping that, uh, that nut off of the stud there. Then I moved up to the, those two top bolts. So I'd really suggest trying to do the, the bottom two first because um, get a little bit of experience in how, how they come off. And if you make any mistakes like I did, you have access to cut them off. So again, uh, torch, torch the nut and the, the bolts for probably a good minute or two and then uh, cooled it down with some penetrating oil. Got my 14 millimeter socket on there and really pounded it uh, to seat that onto the nut. And really using the um, sledgehammer and that, I think that shock just breaks up a lot of that rust. And so you can see just how much rust came off when I was able to to uh, pull yeah, that nut baby. off. So then same thing, this uh, very last nut, I'm gonna do the same procedure, and that one you really wanna make sure you take your time on. It is very inaccessible, and it would be very difficult to uh, pull that, or to, uh, to cut that nut off. Same procedure, a lot of heat, a lot of penetrating oil, and a lot of time trying to seat that socket onto onto the nut there. And it was a success getting that nut off. So I was able to get yes. two nuts off and then snap the other one and had to cut off the, uh, the nut. So about 50% success rate there. So then just taking off the exhaust uh, component. So that bracket was a 13 millimeter I just took off uh, some of those panels. Taking off this exhaust hanger here, I don't think this was actually necessary, but I did it anyways. Um, so it was like an E12 on one side and a 13 millimeter nut on the other side. I didn't need to remove this because this just holds the exhaust um, tubes together, but that was a 13 millimeter as well. Here's the steel plate. It's got um, T50 bolts eight of them so just kind of broke the torque 
on those with a ratchet and then came back through with an impact and zapped them out. I was working by myself, got some jack stands just to hold up the exhaust. Um, if it were to fall, that uh, it'd be supported. So here we have a, <clears throat> a hanger right there, right next to the differential, 18 millimeter. It's hard to get my uh, camera up in there, and there's not a whole lot of room, so I just had to use a ratchet and, and work that off enough to where I could free that nut and, and take it out by hand. Here's a 13 millimeter hanger right there and if you can see that hanger up there I think that was an E12 go through the the hole in your in your bumper there uh, use an extension and be able to get that so I started with this this one just because it was harder to to get to um, so if the exhausts were kind of hanging there that um, you know, go after the harder bolt first and then the very last bolt be the easier bolt to get to another jack stand underneath the muffler and lastly we'll take off this 13 millimeter nut so the exhaust just wasn't coming free and it was bonded pretty well at that flange area so I had to take a screwdriver and try and pry it off and uh, came down quickly once it was free it's kind of fortunate that um, I wasn't hurt or anything like that, so uh, just got to be careful with that. You can see I was trapped here, so I just had to wiggle my way out. Just used my creeper here to, um, to pull the exhaust out from underneath the car. Anything with wheels will do. the exhaust out and set that aside. Next it was on to the heat shields. So there's just a bunch of um, different nuts and bolts here. Most of them are 10 millimeter, but just kind of work your way around the heat shields and uh, pull off all the, the nuts and bolts. There's two panels of the heat shield and you're able to pull those down. I don't think these have been touched since uh, the car was made, so there's just a bunch of dirt and debris, so just want to make sure you're not directly underneath it, uh, so just don't get a face full of, of debris. So here you can see the different bolts that attach the Guibo to the drive shaft and Guibo to the transmission. 18 millimeter bolts and 18 millimeter nuts. The first thing I did was disconnect the drive shaft from the Guibo, so those black bolts. I didn't get uh, really good footage of that last bolt um, just because my light kind of went out there but remove up those three bolts and, and nuts and then kind of pull back on the drive shaft enough to give you a little bit of clearance to pull it from that Guibo and then that can just hang there again since I was working by myself use some bungee to um, just hold up the drive shaft while I was working on the differential end So on the differential end, they have different size bolts. So these are 16 millimeter here. It's a 16 millimeter socket and a 16 millimeter wrench on the head of the bolt and the nut. And there's just those three bolts that attach the drive shaft to the Glebo of the differential. So I was able to undo the, all of those pretty easily. 
problem I was facing was this drive shaft was bonded very well to the Guibo. And so it was very difficult to, to pry this off of the Guibo here, um, even though there's nothing holding it on. So I thought, well, let's uh, try and remove the uh, center support bearing bolts here, 13 millimeter. Let's see if I can get a little bit uh, more room to kind of wiggle it out. And that wasn't working either. So then I moved on to basically trying to remove the guibo from the differential. And so you have these uh, Torx bolts here. So there's three of them. Um, and since there's no nut on the back side, basically had to uh, pull on the e-brake to, to get the drive shaft to stop spinning. So I was able to get enough leverage to, to break the, the torque on those Torx bolts and um, be able to remove them. So I had to undo the e-brake to spin the drive shaft then pull on the e-brake again so I could remove the bolt and then just repeated that process with all three of those bolts there. Again, I dealt with the exact same problem. The guibo was bonded really well to the differential flange, so both sides were just not coming off. And so I just used, tried to use a lot of different methods here, prying with the screwdriver, prying with the pry bar, um, tried to, to hammer on the, the rubber part of the guibo to try and break that free, and it was kind of a pain in the ass. So just um, had to use a lot of elbow grease and a lot of prying to, to eventually break those rust bonds free. And it took me so much time that my camera actually ran out of battery, so I didn't capture that final moment of breaking that Guibo free from, from the differential and from the drive shaft. You can see I got my feet up on the, the rear axle trying to pull the drive shaft off. So I was able to pull the drive shaft off finally. And really it was this differential side of the drive shaft that was causing a lot of problems. But you can see there's a nice rust developing there. And on the guibo, there's uh, some nice rust bonds that formed kind of on those metal inserts. So really this was bonded very well <laughs> to the back end of this drive shaft. So it was just a lot of prying, elbow grease, and, and cussing to get this off. On the transmission side, once I took the drive shaft off, it's pretty easy to, to get this guibo disc off. Um, 18 millimeter, you know, um, socket on one side, 18 millimeter wrench on the nut, um, three bolts, pull them off. Really wasn't uh, that complicated at all. So, I'm gonna order some new Guibo discs on both ends, uh, center support bearing, and some new hardware. And uh, we'll be ready to reassemble the, the drive shaft with the new components, put it back on the car. The, the studs that I broke off on the exhaust manifold. So I was able to take off my exhaust manifold, took them to an exhaust shop, and had them um, punch out these um, the studs, which I needed an acetylene torch for. Only costed me 20 bucks uh, to get those out. So um, I'm not going to go through the whole exhaust manifold removal in this video. I will have a separate video for that. Hopefully you're able to get these nuts off without having to um, you know, remove this exhaust manifold. So I don't want to bore you with that um, in this video, but I will make a, a separate video detailing how I got this exhaust manifold off if you do happen to run into that situation. So um, I'll put a link in the description for the exhaust manifold removal, but uh, we are going to order some parts. Uh, once we get those in, we will put them on the drive shaft and then reassemble everything on the car. Now it's on to trying to replace the center support bearing and uh, depending on which E90 you have, you might have an 18 millimeter bolt that is um, holding the drive shaft into the, um, or the, the front of the drive shaft to the back of the drive shaft. I did not have that, I just have the extra long spline that just kind of holds it together 
So first, I'm just kind of removing this this boot from the uh, the drive shaft, and then since this is balanced, want to make sure you respline this when you're reassembling it. Uh, make sure that those are nice and lined up. So kind of had two different markers, a, a blue and a green, just to make sure if one mark got uh, rubbed off, that I'd have have another one to, to reference off of. So separate the drive shaft there, and then trying to remove this um, this bearing here was really difficult. Started by just trying to punch it out with uh, a long piece of metal, so this piece of rebar. That just wasn't working at all. So I decided just to, to go out and buy a um, three draw puller. So you can see here, I'm trying to pull it off. And I'm going around the, the plastic part of the uh, center support bearing, but you can see right there how kind of, it, it's not straight, it's kind of bending. And uh, that just, it wasn't looking good right there. And so I decided I'm just gonna cut the rubber there so I could get the three jaw puller onto the bearing itself and get that kind of, get more axial um, force kind of directly on that bearing to pull it straight off. And using a ratchet was pretty difficult um, because this um, drive shaft wants to spin. So it was hard to get leverage on it and kind of hold it down and prevent it from spinning. So busted out the, the impact and this just uh, took it off very easily. So I got my new center support bearing here and uh, just from kind of the research that I found online, found one source that just kind of said to just kind of tap it down on the uh, this little plastic ring. And so I just want to show you the the stupidity here. Should have known that this was not a good idea. So trying to seat this whole thing, you can see I'm separating that plastic part from the bearing itself. So now the bearing is not connected to the plastic part of the central support um, housing there. So that was uh, that was kind of frustrating. So kind of broke that one. Had to buy a new one and uh, found a better solution here. So this is a inch and a quarter black pipe and get galvanized or black black is just generally a little cheaper and it's six inches long so it's longer than the length of that spline and it it fits really nicely onto that metal part of the bearing so was able to use just a, a hammer and this black pipe to to seat this bearing onto the drive shaft and that worked really well so inch and a quarter pipe six inches long is what i used and that uh, seated the bearing really nice, and it was able to fr uh, spin spin nice and freely. Just putting this uh, the new boot, this rubber boot, back on. That smaller piece goes towards the center support bearing, and here just wanting to respline this, and it it was pretty difficult. I don't know why it, it, it took so long, but I kept. Kept lining it up and, and trying to get that to to be able to, to spline correctly, but it was just taking a while. And I don't know what the magic was, but just pushed and once it splined it, it went in pretty easily. Just getting that rubber boot back on. So we have two different guibos here. You can see there's kind of no washer sticking out versus a washer sticking out. So the one I'm shaking right there is the differential. The one I'm shaking right there is on the transmission side. So you have these arrows on the, the guibo discs and the arrows need to point towards a flange. So <clears throat> you can see here, the arrow is not pointed towards the flange of the drive shaft. And so that is the incorrect way. So you want to spin that so the arrow is pointing towards the flange of the drive shaft. So I got my new new bolts and, and nuts here. Um, 
And these nuts are like self-locking nuts. So I think at the very least, um, you probably want to replace those nuts if you're going to reuse your hardware. I got new hardware um, just because I didn't want to go back down there. So I was able to just kind of torque these three bolts down. 18 millimeter wrench, 18 millimeter socket. And then I just hand torqued all these down and tried to use about the same amount of force on every bolt. So you can see on this differential side, they also have arrows as well. So again, the arrows need to point towards the flange. So you can see that kind of washer uh, seats really nicely into that the flange. Uh, so you just want to make sure that's seated well. These are 16 millimeter bolts and 16 millimeter nuts. And torque these down by hand, try to use the same amount of force on every bolt. And now the drive shaft is ready to go back in. So I have some bungees up there to uh, kind of be a, a third hand for me. So first I tried to, to put it into the differential side, um, but that just wasn't working, so I, I decided to switch it and and try and put in the, the transmission side first. And there wasn't enough clearance here when I was putting that drive shaft in. And if you remember that, that boot on the drive shaft kind of was able to collapse and expand. So here I'm pushing the drive shaft together to try and collapse it just enough so you can just see right there. I was able to push the drive shaft in, collapse that boot enough to where I was able to get enough clearance to get that onto the differential. Forgot to bring my hardware down there, so just had to take my bungee cord and kind of bungee up the, the center of the drive shaft and hold it in place while I got my hardware. So here you can't really see, but I'm, I'm putting in the, the 13 millimeter bolts into the, uh, the center support bearing. Um, so not really torquing those down, but just being able to get enough thread on there to support the center of the drive shaft. So I could uh, attach the guibos to the transmission flange as well as the differential flange. So again, got your new bolts, get those in there in the three holes. Um, and if you'll notice, the, those arrows are pointing towards the transmission flange. So just want to be careful of that. And the instructions on the, on the Guibo disc kind of tell you that um, you'll get premature fa failure if you do not line those arrows up correctly. So it's kind of hard to get these, these nuts on the back end. So this that position that I was in was kind of the only position I was able to to able to thread those those nuts on. So it's kind of hard here if you weren't careful with it um, that the nut would slip off of the open end of your box wrench. So I had to use kind of an impact to to get these kind of snug. Um, and from there, I was just going to use uh, a hand ratchet so I could make sure I didn't over torque them down just because that Milwaukee is, is super powerful. Once I was able to kind of seat those, went with the just hand torquing them down with my ratchet. Again, that way I can 
make sure I put the same amount of torque onto every single bolt. So from there, move down to the differential side. Now these were using the, the Torx bolts. Probably suggest that you get new Torx bolts. First, just kind of hand threaded those in. Made sure the washer on that back end was seated nicely into the flange of the differential. And again, same thing on this side, the arrows are pointing towards the differential flange for those Torx bolts. So you can see the, the drive shaft spinning, so again, I had to um, kind of pull on the e-brake to keep the drive shaft from spinning, and then was able to get enough leverage to torque down those bolts. And then basically had to release the e-brake, spin the drive shaft, and then pull the e-brake again. So basically both sides of the drive shaft are are in place, torqued down. So now I went back with a 13 millimeter socket and torqued down the center support bearing bolts. And from there, it was just kind of reassembling the, the heat shields. Kind of won't walk through this a whole lot. It's pretty self explanatory. Um, just a bunch of 10 millimeter bolts. I'm just using a quarter inch impact driver here just because I didn't want to over torque those bolts down. Putting up this um, exhaust hanger support thing. Just getting that loosely in position so when I put the exhaust in I still have a little bit of wiggle room. Now it was time to put the exhaust back in place. And this was uh, fairly difficult doing it by yourself. Definitely if you have another person to, to help you out, um, that would be preferred method. But if you don't, you just gotta have to get a little creative. So I have some extra jack stands, getting those in place. Kind of want to show the full struggle here. So started at the muffler side. So trying to get that in position a little bit. Kind of using my knee right there, if you can see, to act as a third hand. Had the jack stand too high. So I had to lower that a bit. And then first thing I tried was to, to get that onto that pipe itself. And that just wasn't working because the muffler has too much weight on one side. So you really had to kind of prop that up underneath the muffler. So once I got that muffler up, kind of moved over to the resonator, tried to get that into place, using my knee again to, to act as a support. And then get a jack stand somewhere where it's gonna kind of hold the exhaust system up. So once I found a balancing point, that was, uh, that was good to be able to get that kind of up into place. You can see my two jack stands there. So then to keep it in place, um, decided to put this steel plate back on. 
and just be able to get enough thread in there to be able to support the exhaust system but still be able to kind of move it back and forth so I could get it on the flange over by the exhaust manifold Could have torqued these all the way down, um, but I didn't know if that was gonna push the exhaust up so much that I wouldn't be able to have enough room to kind of maneuver it back and forth. Now, kind of moving the exhaust to to get those flanges to match up and. Since I got those um, pressed in bolts punched out, and I didn't want to get new ones pressed in, so kind of from the research I, I did online, um, seemed to be a consensus that you could use grade eight bolts. So the bolts that I'm using are three eighths of an inch in diameter, and they're one and a half inches long. But I probably, if I were to do this again, get two inch bolts, just so the nuts have a little bit more thread to, to be able to lock on to. So just uh, getting the gaskets in place in between the, um, the two sides of the muffler or the two sides of the exhaust. Getting this little bracket back on there. Had some lock washers and my grade eight nuts as well. So again, these are three eighths of an inch diameter bolts and I suggest two inches, two inches long. So now just tightening those and, and torquing all those down. And then from there, really, it was just kind of reassembling all of the exhaust components. So that hanger that I didn't have to take off in the first place, putting that back on, 13 millimeter socket. And then torquing down this steel uh, plate here. came back with a, a ratchet on, on all these bolts just to make sure everything was, was torqued down well. So now that the exhaust is in place, kind of tightening down this, um, this hanger support thing. bracket back into place so this is a 13 millimeter again now kind of getting that hanger there's a stud up there so kind of have to just push the exhaust system up there you can see the stud got your 18 millimeter nuts so hand thread that on as much as possible. And you really don't have a whole lot of room here. So just very kind of small path to be able to, to torque this down. And then again, this uh, kind of bolts all the way up through, through the bumper there. So just getting that in place and, and torquing that down. And since you have the weight of the muffler, it makes it a little bit easier if you can kind of hold up that muffler a little bit. Kind of use your knee to, to prop that up. 
was this uh, last 13 millimeter nut on this hanger here. Thanks for watching.